The Ballast Water Management BWM, convention aims to protect the environment from the potentially harmful effects of ballast water discharges. This film will raise your awareness of why the BWM convention is needed, help you become familiar with its requirements and show how a ballast water management plan can be developed. As we have just seen, ballast water can have a major impact on our environment. To prevent this from happening in the future, it is important that we comply with the requirements for ballast water management. Globally, it has been estimated that approximately 3,000 to 4,000 million tonnes of untreated ballast water are discharged every year. It has also been estimated that ship ballast transports more than 10,000 species. This includes living organisms and pathogens such as bacteria and viruses, which are discharged with the ballast water when the ships reach their destination. Many species of bacteria, plants and animals can survive in the ballast water and sediments carried in ships, even after several months. Anything that is small enough to pass through the ship's ballast water sea chest, strainers and pumps may be carried in the ship's ballast water. There are thousands of marine species that may pass into the ship when it takes ballast water on board. Many of these creatures can use the sediment, which is taken on board along with the ballast water, as a refuge. Foreign species are not only transported within the ship's ballast tanks, but also attached to the propellers, the outside of the hull, inside the sea chests or on other parts. Invasive organisms may also be introduced through biofouling of oil rigs and their support vessels. The rigs often remain anchored in one area for extended periods of time, 
and can become colonized like an artificial reef before being moved to a new site. However, it has been calculated that the most likely distance for maximum invasive colonization is about 8,000 to 10,000 kilometers between native and non native site. Marine species have always been spread throughout the ocean by natural means, carried on currents and attached to floating wreckage, even before ships started to carry water as ballast. The natural barriers of land masses, ocean temperatures, salinity, and depth have created the ecosystems we see in the oceans today. A pan global tropical zone separates the northern and southern temperature and cold water zones. This allows many species to evolve independently and results in a different marine biodiversity between the north and the south. However, rapidly increasing world trade and the use of larger and faster ships, completing their voyages in shorter time, has reduced many of the natural barriers to the spread of species across the oceans. Many factors affect the likelihood of invasion. And establishment of foreign species due to ballast water. Ports where large volume shipments of bulk cargoes take place can be vulnerable to invasion when combined with other elements. Invasion hotspots of foreign species have a high density of marine traffic, but not all areas with high shipping density are hotspots. Factors like environmental similarity and the length of the transport also affect the likelihood of invasion. Marine species have life cycles that include a planktonic stage. Plankton is the name of the microscopic organisms that float freely in organic currents and other bodies of water. Tiny plants are called phytoplankton, and tiny animals are called zooplankton. These tiny organisms, whether plant or animal, are the first link in the marine food chain, since they are a food source for many animals. Plankton comes from the Greek word planktos, which means drifting. Certain species may be transferred in ballast water during their non adult phase. The adults are unlikely to be taken in as ballast because they are too large, live attached to the seabed, or are in a different environment for part of their life cycle. If there is a high starting density of organisms and the voyage is short, there is an increased chance that there will be surviving organisms in the tank at the end of the voyage. The maximum length of survival of organisms in ballast water varies and is often unknown. In general, ballast water must have been within a ship's tank for 100 days or more before the risk of survival of the species is reduced to an acceptable level. Rising global temperatures could lead to an increase in foreign species invasion. Changing environmental conditions, for example, in areas that were previously dissimilar, are now more likely to support the same organisms. Changes in trading patterns, for example, by opening the Arctic trade routes for more traffic, causes a shift in shipping intensity. Opening up new areas could lead to a spread of potential new species. Most of these species do not survive the journey or survive in new areas, but occasionally some do. If aggressive and fast reproducing, an introduced new species may not have the same natural break, such as pathogens, grazers, predators, or parasites, on its population numbers that it had when in its native environment. The introduction of new species can therefore often expand unhindered. And have large and harmful consequences on the new host ecosystem. We have now learned about the history of ballast water and the different threats it poses to the environment. Now let's take a look at an example from real life. The invasion of the Black Sea by a voracious comb jellyfish from North America is one of the best documented examples of a marine alien invasive species introduced through ballast water. The comb jellyfish arrived on ships from the American Atlantic coast in 1982. It eats both zooplankton, the food of commercially important fish in the Black Sea, and the eggs and larvae of the same fish species.
With no enemies in their new home, the jellies propagated at an alarming rate. By the mid 1990s, they accounted for 90% of the total biomass in the Black Sea, a biomass more than the total annual fish catch around the world. The species quickly spread into the neighboring Sea of Azov, too. The invasion contributed to the near collapse of Black Sea commercial fisheries within a few years. The once quite prosperous seafood industry has lost about 1 billion US dollars since the jellies were released. Anchovy fisheries in the Azov Sea, already under stress from pollution and overfishing, completely collapsed. Dolphin numbers in the Black Sea and Azov Sea also dropped dramatically as the fish they used to feed on disappeared. The entire ecosystem has been disrupted. The jellies have even reduced the amount of oxygen in the Black Sea. They've now entered the Caspian Sea, where they are causing the same problems, and have been found in the Baltic Sea and along the Atlantic coast of Norway, too. We have considered the natural spread of marine species, how the spread occurs, and barriers to natural spread. And we have considered examples of the ecological and economic consequences of the introduction of invasive species in new ecosystems.